In a world of increasing AI, the inevitable introduction of robots in future, massive data breaches and increasing government surveillance, proving you're actually a real human is about to become the most valuable asset you own. If the government controls the app you use to log into everything, they could theoretically track every time you enter a bar, visit a website, or access a service. The battle for the future of identity is happening right now. The question is, what is the future of your identity? Who will own this? For years we've treated our digital identity like we treat our passwords. We give it away to Google, Facebook, governments, etc. And we hope they keep it safe, or we just ignore what they do with this data. However, identity theft is at an all-time high, as well as fraud in general, with this coming from Fraudscape's report, looking at the first half of 2025 compared to 2024 and earlier. And at the same time, governments are pushing for more control under the guise of convenience. So can decentralized identity and crypto technology solve the identity crisis? And what exactly is decentralized identity? Well, often called self-sovereign identity, decentralized identity is a shift in power. Because in the current Web2 model, your identity is essentially rented. You log into a platform and all of your data they collect sits on their servers, not yours. However, decentralized identity flips this model. Instead of your data living in a massive central database that can be leaked, hacked, sold, etc., it lives in a digital wallet on your own device. Just a reminder that I do offer one-to-one -one coaching to those who are genuinely looking to educate themselves in the crypto space. With there being links in the description to contact me and book in a free video call to see if we'd be a good fit. Decentralized identity therefore brings the physical privacy you have by holding it yourself, for example, your driving license or your passport, into the digital world using blockchain technology. You create your identifier or a DID and you control the keys. No one can revoke it and no one can see it without your permission. So think of the possible use cases to protect your data online for online authentication or for KYC. So to vote when ordering something, to share your medical records, for education and employment when applying, all owned by you and you decide when you share that data. And this matters because the alternative is already being built and it looks very different. Many governments across the world are racing to launch centralized digital IDs. In the UK, the government has now passed the Data Use and Access Act 2025 that received royal assent in July. So the compulsory UK digital ID scheme is no longer just a proposal, it's law and is supposed to be rolled out by 2029. So what does this act actually do? Well, it creates a new statutory framework called Digital Verification Services. And this Brit card, which is the name of the app on your phone, will likely be used initially to verify your right to work, provide access to government agencies, courts, and local authorities, prove your age for things like buying alcohol, and to access other services like driving licenses, childcare, tax records, etc. The government claims this will improve right to work checks, address illegal immigration, reduce identity theft, and allow easier access to services like government agencies. However, privacy groups like Big Brother Watch have raised massive red flags. They warn this creates a single point of failure for people's data. If one government database holds your passport, your tax records, and your health data, for example, that becomes the ultimate target for every hacker in the world. And we've seen this fail before. Look at India's Aadhaar system, the largest biometric ID system in the world which has suffered massive data breaches where millions of people's private details were leaked. And if that happens, you can't just cancel your face or your fingerprint like you can with a credit card. That data is gone forever. And that's why nearly 3 million people have signed a petition against rolling out the mandatory digital ID system in the UK, which will be debated in Parliament on the 8th of December, by the way. And in the EU, it's a similar story. With the European Digital Identity Regulation, also known as EI-2, with EU digital identity wallets focusing on accessing public and private online services by proving who you are, storing digital documents, whether that's your education records to your train tickets held in the wallet, you being able to share these digital documents with others, and then you being able to sign documents with your wallet to provide a legally binding e-signature. But while these digital ID schemes promise privacy, 
Critics worry about the potential for government overreach. If the government controls the app you use to log into everything, they could theoretically track every time you enter a bar, visit a website, or access a service. This creates what critics call the panopticon effect, which is where people change their behavior to conform to social norms because they believe they're under constant surveillance. And this links heavily to the fears we've seen around central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. If the government can track what you do, what you buy, what you access, etc., and has the ability to limit this, they then have total control and this is the fear. A decentralized identity model solves this though by using zero knowledge proofs. So if we think about what happens now if someone needs to prove their age, for example, they likely hand someone their driving license to prove they're over 18 or 21 to buy alcohol, for example. But by doing this, they're handing them their full name, their home address, and their exact date of birth on that card, which they don't need to know. They just need to know the person's over 18 or 21, but the technology of a plastic card reveals it. However, decentralized identity fixes this. With a zero knowledge proof, a digital wallet can prove a fact without revealing the data. So if someone needs to prove they're over 18, for example, their wallet doesn't show the person that's checking this their date of birth. Instead, it runs a calculation and simply sends a cryptographic tick or a yes that confirms this. Their device therefore knows for a fact that that person's over 18, but they never see their full name, their address, or their date of birth. And this is the difference between the old model of showing your papers and proving a fact, which should be the future of proving identity and data ownership. So the technology exists for this, but who's actually building it in the crypto space? First, we have Provido ID, which you might know as Polygon ID. They evolved from Polygon Labs in 2024 to become an independent protocol agnostic company. Now headquartered in Switzerland, they're building the plumbing for this new system on multiple blockchains, not just one. And they're working with some huge companies like Deutsche Bank and Telefonica. And they recently created the Billions Network specifically to solve the age verification problem. So they're rolling out the exact tools we discussed, allowing you to prove you're a certain age without handing over your driving license or passport to a website. This is an example of reusable KYC in action because you verify once, store the credential in your wallet and never share your raw data again. So for example, when you sign up to a new crypto exchange, you don't have to upload your passport photo again and go through that long KYC process. You just connect your wallet, prove you've passed the check already and you're in. None of your data is stored on the exchange's servers to be potentially put at risk later. Then we have Hedera, which is heavily focusing on the enterprise side using the W3C decentralized identifier standards. They're not just looking at human identity, but identity for things. So imagine a future where your car has its own decentralized identity on the blockchain. It could talk to a charging station or to a robot at a supermarket, verify it has the funds to pay for the electricity, food, or whatever you're purchasing, and execute the transaction automatically before driving back to your house without you needing to hand over your credit card details to the charging company. And this isn't just theory. Just last month, the Beer Group in the UAE launched a verified digital identity platform built entirely on Hedera. This is one of the first real world examples of a major enterprise using decentralized identity to verify citizens and employees. This is a self-sovereign system where the user holds the keys, not a central government database with BIA creating climate smart sustainable cities, focusing on five areas of the environment, energy, technology, healthcare, and real estate. And finally, there's Kilt Protocol, which has been around since 2022 and is part of the Polkadot ecosystem, as well as being available on Base and Ethereum. It's already worked with integrators like Deloitte and has many apps, including Social KYC, which solves a slightly different problem, online trust. It effectively lets you prove you own an email address or an X handle without ever giving up your password or privacy. This means you can build a digital reputation that you actually own rather than the one the social media platform owns for you. And Kilt is focused on the AI, DeepIn, real world asset and gaming spaces in terms of decentralized digital identity. Linked with this, 
We can't really talk about identity without mentioning World, formerly known as Worldcoin. This is the project co-founded by Sam Altman of OpenAI in 2019. Their goal is to solve proof of personhood, proving you're a human and not an AI bot by scanning your iris with a chrome sphere called the orb. They state that being identified as human will ensure access to things like financial services, concert ticket sales, dating apps, video games, etc., as well as being able to connect with other real humans rather than AI bots. World claims to be decentralized and preserves your privacy using zero knowledge proofs. But some are skeptical of this because even if the blockchain is decentralized, the issue is the orb, a proprietary centralized piece of hardware, which isn't all open source. You therefore have to trust that the device isn't secretly storing your biometric data or leaving a back door open for others. And it's a perfect example of the tension in this space. We need to prove we're human, but do we want to hand our data and biometrics to a company to do it? As always, self-custody and the security of people's crypto is key to us at Coin Knowledge as a business focused on education. So holding your assets securely in a hardware wallet, in cold storage in something like a Trezor is key. And I did a review and unboxing of the Trezor Safe 5 hardware wallet, which you can find a link to here and in the description of this video, as well as a link to their official website. After doing that, the next crucial step is securing your seed phrase. CryptoTag is the leading and best-selling storage device for that. And I recently did a review of the CryptoTag Zeus model, which again, you can find the link to above and in the description of this video. So where is all this heading? The biggest challenge for decentralized identity isn't the technology, it's the user experience. Because if we're being honest, most people choose convenience over privacy. Logging in with sign in with Google or using Apple Face ID is easy. Managing a self-sovereign identity wallet, backing up your keys and signing transactions is harder. So for decentralized identity to win, it has to be just as easy as the centralized version. However, the catalyst might be AI, because the more the AI agents and deepfakes become indistinguishable from reality, we can no longer trust what we see or who we're talking to. So we'll need to move towards a web of trust, where every email, every video, and every transaction will need a cryptographic signature to prove it's real. If we don't build a decentralized layer for that, the governments and big tech companies will build a centralized one for us. And once they have that control, it's much harder to reclaim it. So to summarize, the battle for the future of identity is happening right now. On one side, we have the UK and EU governments pushing for centralized digital ID wallets that are efficient, but a potential privacy nightmare and a single point of failure. On the other hand, we have the crypto ethos of self-sovereign identity using zero knowledge proofs to prove who we are without giving away our data. The technology is being built as we've seen, but the question is, will we value our privacy enough to adopt it? Or will most people sleepwalk into a digital surveillance state because it's just more convenient? As always, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.